Hello and welcome back to another episode of Supercoach Sada. My name is Ben. And I'm Chris. And thank you for joining us for the Dirty Man Moustache Special, ladies and gentlemen, for those on the YouTube. Chris has got an absolutely filthy mo. Uh, not sure what when it's you about. Say, I'm, well, I'm trying to drag the Twitter, the the the, uh, the normal listeners on the podcast over to YouTube just to see this gloriousness. Um, <laughs> and I'm not doing you any justice. I, <laughs> yes, I, please I, come. <laughs> I saw Top Gun um, and I started growing a moustache literally the next week. It was brilliant. And what I will say is for a sequel, uh, you know, sequels usually let you down. This had actually exceeded my expectations by a long way. Yes, hey before we move on, SC Insider 100, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Also, all the audio platforms as well. So, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, you name it. 10 of the YouTube, Chris. Yeah, just search for Supercoach Insider. Loving the old YouTube. Cause Loving it. I'm going to have a nice splash vodka here, Chris, because you can't have any right at this current point in time. That's another reason why I should have come over. <laughs> but here's the thing. Every oh, time I come ooh, over there, ooh, you know, ooh. a couple of splash vodkas in, then you're like, oh, well, we've got this Japanese scotch, so why don't we have a bit of that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a better one. This is called Milk and Honey. I'm not even lying. It's an uh, Israeli whiskey, uh, red wine cask. It's extremely smooth. I got sold on it because I was talking about the Japanese whiskeys. It's like Christmas in a cup. Smooth to start, warmth in the middle, and then all the flavors in the world afterwards. So I quite like it. Um, Excellent. Today, we're covering all of the hot topics. I would love to swear right now but i cannot uh, because it, of the audience tell us like, how no. you feel buddy earmuffs just unleash yeah, just the earmuffs. beast earmuffs. unleash and the you beast can earmuffs you can say whatever you like <laughs> can, they hear me? Not can, they, can they hear me chris this has got some no, spectators no, no, i got these 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 things oh perfect earmuffs. yeah earmuffs so you can say fuck <laughs> shit whatever you like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cock, exactly. balls. don't celebrate oh frank the tank um hey literally so upset this round just gone uh on my team reveal i'm gonna curse so hard it's not even funny bruce um in in one week out the next, the only saving grace is obviously that Flynn is injured. So when he comes back from his suspension, he should be okay. So we're going to talk about Proust. We're going to talk about Butters. We're going to talk about English. And we're going to talk about the fucking trifecta that is literally ruining my life. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, I love that you're so upset. But, buddy, you're like in the top 200, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 170 oh. second or something. But literally brought in Proust three minutes before... That because of it's my about logical time you thinking. had a bad trade go for you, mate. You've you've had you've been kissed so far this year, mate. Absolutely <sighs> kissed. You keep going on about how I've been kissed, yet I'm ranked. I actually am ranked a <laughs> thousand and seventh. You know who's in front of me, Damien. Damien, if you're listening to this, you can go oh. to hell, buddy. You're only there because I helped you. Ah, <laughs> sounds like Swizz taking everyone's no, good advice except for his own. I have to say, for a guy that's in his second year, like last year, I think he still made like maybe two and a half thousand in his first year, and this year he's now ranked six hundred going into the back of the season. Good on, good on him because um, he's playing quite well. He's, and his team, I look at his team and I'm just so jealous. Everyone that like, uh, like my my unique pods against him, I'm, I'm he's running like Sicily and I'm running Luke Ryan. <laughs> like I'm just like, I'm just really hoping. For like a huge turnaround of form and it's just oh well whatever yeah anyway look we'll get into that later it's, it's that painful time of the year where last week i'm like okay parish is out everyone's like you know what? i'm oh. gonna risk it for the biscuit i've got i've got um i think i had seven trades i was like boom look at this i'm gonna luxury trade one because i like six trades for the rest of the year looking pretty good next minute <laughs> injury 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 oh mate it was absolutely horrible i could not curse enough um Noise one of the people in one of the people in our chats as well, uh, in the the main chat that we're in anyway, it basically brought in, I think, all four injured players or three injured players. Yeah, Brutus, yeah. Brutus. That's um, brutal from Brutus. Absolutely brutal. Uh, control, alt, delete. Just delete your team. So let's move on and let's start off with the round. So let's go with the, the big issue. And we're going to say big because he's highly owned, highly averaging. Um, English is is an, is one that I definitely want to talk about. So he's causing a lot of conundrums this week because either he's in your ruck and you have no cover, or you've got possibly Proust in English and then you again have no cover. So the the big situation we're going for at the moment is when we look at that ruck line, six hundred and five thousand. He's averaging one hundred nineteen point eight, but it is also kind of buffered by the fact he's only played eight games. So it, it is a bit of an issue. He's knocked out. Uh, delayed concussion. So the big issue that I have here is is that the game is 12 days from the time that he played the last game. So it's 
touch and go. So he is technically allowed to play, I believe, uh, against Brisbane. But he's been knocked out before, and he actually had some really heavy concussion symptoms last time. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen this time, but I am very cautious and concerned because they're already talking about playing it safe and being conservative. I'm not sure he plays next Thursday. It's it's the play on a Thursday night, flying up to Brisbane. I don't know if I'm going to be – it's really kind of getting on my nerve a little bit that I might have to kind of flip him after I just got him, Chris. Where are you at with the whole English scenario? Um. I think even if it's two weeks, he's still one of the best averaging forwards. So, I mean, there's there's that. There's that. There, there is a couple of things, reasons why to hold. There's also a couple of reasons why you should trade. But at the end of the day, you can't be like, – who if you're trading him, who are you trading to? Because, if you, I mean, outside of, say, Bont, if you don't have Bont, or like a clear and obvious top four contender, you know, Bailey Smith's not back. He's your other one. Remember what we, uh, we had a look at? Uh, I think a few weeks ago, the highest averaging forwards are averaging basically 107 and up. So there's no like there's no one that's going to be eligible in the forward line to average those sort of numbers. So you're really costing yourself for the rest of the season. Now, having said that, you can make that up over this one week. So because because he, he miss, misses the one week, um, maybe two. You know, yeah, maybe two. Then you can make that up over the season. But it's got to, you, you've got to really crack that code because I don't know, um, I, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I don't know who else is the next best on the run outside of those clear and obvious choices. So as that, that's something we'll probably get into a little bit later in the podcast. The other thing I will say is that I did a ladder predictor today, and I did not have the dogs making the finals. So they're going to want to have him back because, like a game against Brisbane, I know they could just write it off as a loss. But I don't think they can afford to write off team, like losses like that. They can't afford to just fly up to Brisbane for the sake of flying up there without the intention to win. They need to win games of football or they're not making finals. It's as simple as that. Um, they've got a pretty tough run for the rest of the season, the Doggies. And I, I've i got them sitting just outside. I think they might even be 10th for the whole season. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, they're going to have to pull something out of the hat. And it's just not time where they can just go, we'll give you the extra week. So there's that as well. Um, obviously, well, you know, concussions are a serious thing and they're not just going to to say, to, to be fair, Chris, I'm pretty sure it's not, um, the club saying, oh, we'll give you a week. I'm pretty sure whether he's fit or not is the, the well, big issue that, uh, as far as concussion. Well, with concussion, there's very, there's clear and obvious, you know, just, you know, are you over it? The symptoms, are you not? And they run that test every single day while they're in concussion protocol. Um, and then they keep doing it every single day after if they are still suffering from symptoms after that time. So... Yeah, the club you know, may say they're taking every precaution. That could just mean that they're going to be running the tests until just not, like normal. Like it's nothing over and above, which is what I'm getting at. It's just going to be the same standard protocol. And that's yeah, yeah. usually, which it's usually actually, I think like the, the medical profession said that um, I believe that they, they require it to be 14 days. Now, I don't know. I don't know the science behind all that, but obviously last year, they the AFL changed from seven to 12, which it's kind of like a slap in the face because it's not really two weeks, but it appeases the people that say it should be more than seven. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know who they consulted about that. Um, ultimately, obviously the club doctors know best and we've just got to trust that they have all the best info. Um, and that's another conversation for another day. But do I think that you should trade him? I just don't know if it's worth trading him. He also provides cover in a ruck line that is completely shot to pieces right now. So... You know, what happens if you get to round you know, 20 and Darcy goes down or Wits goes down or whatever? What are you going to do? You well, know? you bring in the most favorite Luke Jackson, Chris, and get your other swing player involved. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you know the what only I mean, way. Like, it's a valid concern. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a few reasons to keep rather than trade. So, well, uh, and, and if with you have Tickle Bruce, going down, yeah, yeah. well, if most people have Tickle at R3, right? So he's not going to be back for the rest of the season, likely. So he's now a zero. So you don't have a playing R3, most people. So, yeah, it's it's all a bit ah. up in the air. Um, mm. The only way I can see trading English is if it was Bontempelli and it was your only way to get Bontempelli. Um, if you're playing for leagues, it doesn't really matter. This is a great week. Your opponents probably have a donut. You probably have a donut. Who cares? Move on. Just gentleman's um, handshake, my friend. Yeah, pretty just, much. Just tell just, them that you'll both play a donut. Literally message the person and say, hey, man, can you just like not trade some English to someone and I won't and we'll just call it, yeah, yeah. 21, 21 aside. 
Yep. And, and then just say that way like you'll you both would... have an advantage later. Right. Um, and so exactly. and if and if that person messaging you is Ben, he's trading. <laughs> he's fucking trading. Do not believe uh, a word he says. I'm, I'm going for overall. <laughs> I have to. And and that's that's the, the weird situation. Now if you're sitting yeah, you know, two thousand to five thousand. I think you can probably play a little bit more conservative. Play the rookie on field. If you're sitting in that sort of top five hundred, I think you have to kind of push on and hope for some luck. Um, now that luck might mean you get overtaken later, but you kind of you need to push on in some aspect. Now it's this weird kind of balancing situation where if you have coverage, so playing a rookie on field but keeping a butters who are back in one or two weeks, the ruck situation is definitely very real. Um, English, you know, yes, he's great cover when he's playing, but at the same time, Proust is a little bit in and out at this current point in time. Um, newsflash, I have Proust, so that's why I keep talking about him. It's devastating. <laughs> tell, um, tell, tell the world oh, why, why it's more devastating for you than other people. Couldn't you well, please tell everyone? When Wits was out, I traded him to uh, – when Proust was out, I traded him to Wits, and everything was great. Gorn went out, and I was like, okay – um, I had English and Bontempelli locked into my side, Butters got injured. And I'm like, oh, crap. I was like, well, you know, I was thinking I could go one down, one up next week so I could keep my trades and go Butters down and I could go and bring in Darcy and put mm. English from my ruck line into my forward line and I'd have Darcy. But I'm well, like, oh, but that's that's two trades, Chris. So I was like, wouldn't it be a smarter play for me to kind of go Pruce and I'll keep Butters and that way I can just go butters to Bont and Pelly with the cash that I had in one trade. So I was like, hey, I'll be really smart. I will save myself one trade this week, Chris. I'm not going to get a Darcy next week. I'm going to save one trade. And I got absolutely royally fucked from behind. It was so bad. First how quarter people, injury. How many people traded in Proust last week? Were you like <sighs> one of like five? I could have been. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Actually, you could probably find that out, to be honest, uh, as far as the... Super, uh, so team coaches choice, season change, round ownership change. Now, if I type in filter, so bear with me. This is going to be horrible. Uh, filter, and I'm going to put in Bruce. And where are we? Anyway, you talk, Chris, about how bad it is because it's bad. Yeah, look, it's unlucky. Um, but as I said um, earlier, I'm, I'm just happy that it's finally you got derailed by something because uh, there was no other way I was catching you. <laughs> so, uh, look, I'm, I'm well, well behind. But um, I think now that we're 22 versus 22, I've got a shot. We'll see we'll see how we go. Um, so, Bruce, if you have him, I think it's a trade. I think it's a clear and obvious trade. Um, what? It's not that clear cut. No, I think it's clear cut. It's not that clear club. Now, let me tell you the reasons why it's not. Now, number one, and I'm going to go both sides here because there is definitely an argument for both sides. Number one, um, when you, Flynn's out for at least, I think, two to three, so that'll be one to two, and then they'll probably force him to play uh, seconds to kind of get some form and fitness up. He has a quad injury. So once he gets through this week, Bruce has escaped any damage. They expect him to play next week. Um, if he's sole ruck, which he will be for probably at least a couple of weeks, that spots his anyway, and he probably does bang out some really good scores. The issue is, is that... You know, the cover and the rest of it that comes with it. Now, he's probably going like for like with Darcy, as in has some good games, but is also inconsistent with body and that kind of thing. Now, the, here's the part that does concern me, Chris, and this is probably on the negative side, so I'm going to tell you where I think it is negative. Number one, you could probably just try and flip him to a Darcy or someone else that is probably going to average you the same, which will net you more points, including this week. Now, the issue is, is that his break even, after that really crappy score, it's 125 this week, which is achievable, but it's going to be huge next week, like the next time he plays, I mean. Um, and that's going to be a big issue because if by some chance he gets suspended or injured again, after he's played another couple of rounds, he could be down to like 350000 And then where are you going with no trades and no money? Uh, yeah, there's that. Um, I, I think the the biggest issue really is who who's covering you if you're holding him, because as I said, Tickle, which most people have traded in and um, over the buy rounds, he's obviously out. So, but that's that does leave you with a rack forward swing. However, Cameron was last week. Cameron was only in four percent of the Darcy Cameron I'm talking about was only yes. in four percent of teams. So, uh, not a lot of people have him for cover. So who's the other ruck forward? There's there's two others that are currently not really owned by people, but are now being very highly sought after. Number one is obviously Goldie, um, who's scored quite serviceably. He's been returned to a predominant ruck role. 
um, but not as good as, say, years gone past, and his scoring's not too bad. Um, and the other one, which is, I think, the second highest traded in player, is in Luke Jackson. So people are just basically like, well, if I hold Proust, I have to cover him somehow. The only way is to really get Jackson in, and that's where Jackson's coming into play is because he's coming in as cover for Proust, either as a direct trade down to free up some cash or as a trade that you can link him with Tickle to get him into your ruck line so you can actually not get a zero on field because there's no one, like you, there's no rookie to cover. There's nothing. Like people are basically screwed. So you're handcuffed into a trade. That's what, that, that's what I'm saying. Um, now, handcuffing yourself to a trade of either Darcy Cameron or Luke Jackson, unfortunately handcuffs you into two trades most likely because the with Collingwood playing so well, the likely scenario is that they do try and get Brody Grundy up to speed before the end of the season. So Yeah, I think round 18, they reckon. Yeah, so you don't want to be caught with Darcy Cameron when he's just playing predominantly forward. That week that Brody gets named, uh, Brody Grundy gets named, you have to trade him. So there's a trade gone. You've got a really short time span with Luke Jackson to, to score well. Uh, he was listed as three to five when the injury was announced. So after this week, it'll be two to four. Yeah, it says two to four, but it did say that they don't expect him or Magic back. Uh, so Gorn or Magic back for a month. So yeah, uh, in the same article. So I guess it'll be hit and miss as to that. It it is concerning if if he's your F six, then that's definitely a huge, huge, huge issue. Um, I don't mind the issue of having Jackson as cover, and you know, like say a Hobbs and Jackson to to cover your midfield, your forward line, and your ruck yeah. line. So um, as an F seven op- option, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and like you know, because yeah. if he he could score well over that point, worst case scenario, he's still generally he's quite he doesn't get injured. Touch wood, Jackson. He's averaging like eighty odd, who with spurts of a high ceiling. So you could actually just put the emergency on him if he does really well. You take it. Um, I think you could do a lot worse at three eighty. Like it does suck. It really sucks. Yeah. But then if the issue I have is if you sort of oh I go from Proust to then Darcy Cameron, then he might get a little bit of a niggle like he does and and miss a week as well. And, you know, you could be in this never-ending cycle of not having cover. Um, you know, if obviously if English misses next week, that is. so. Yeah, and so I, I understand why people are looking at those trades as options, but I think the better long-term option is just shore up your ruck line. Like, there's a clear and obvious choice that a lot of people don't have yet in wits. Um, I think that he's the, probably the number one trade-in target. And yes... That second ruck option is a little bit ambiguous. Like, you know, who are you going to go to? Yeah. Everybody's so if you've already got, got wits, mark. if you've already um, got wits, then that's a bit questionable. Yeah. Yeah, but it is and it isn't. I mean, Darcy's the clear and obvious choice. However, his body is also an issue. His role sometimes is questionable because of Meek. Um, but if he has a clear run at it and plays the next, you know, however many games of sole ruck, he will out, out average everybody else. I think that's like I would say that's guaranteed. Um, and I'd probably put money on it, to be completely honest. But he's got to be injury-free, and he's got to be sole ruck. You know what I mean? Like, And uh, Tabner's supposed to be healthy and, and back. So if you see Tabner on the team sheet this week, that will be positive news. And no Meek coming in, obviously. Um, he's obviously just had a week off. His ruck run's still really, really, really good. Um, so Darcy, to me, is still the clear and obvious choice is the best ruck option moving forward. Um, unless you've already, uh, unless you don't have wits as well, which is obviously, as I said, and I look at wits ruck run and I'm like, wow, that's still, that's really, really good as well. Um, so wits and wits and Darcy to me seem the best moving forward in terms of direct replacements for someone like a, a, a Proust or an English, if you're going to trade English and he's in your ruck line. Um, so there's, there's those two combinations, um, where it gets a bit hairy is okay. So forward options now, because obviously butters is out. And we've, I'm very strong on this, and and you kind of agree with me today when we had a chat. Well, yeah, yes, I do. But he's a clear and obvious trade, in my opinion. Like I think that he's the one that needs to go more out of anyone. Like even if I would, if I could solve the Proust issue and not get a zero on field, and trade Butters instead, that's what hundred percent what I'd be doing. Um, and the reason is I I I experienced this last year with Zach Butters. Um, he had this exact same injury in the other leg last year, came back after a couple of weeks, but his role completely shifted. Um, it was nowhere near the same. He played a lot more forward time. I remember we went to the Port Carlton game um, and I watched I watched his role and he's literally playing forward pocket. You guys going to bed? Yeah. No, no. 
literally playing out of a four pocket instead of playing um, on the ball. So we went from playing with stints in the, on the ball to a playing out of four pocket. Now, I think that that's what happens moving forward because we've seen history of that. So when he comes back, he's going to be in a different role. Now, he may work back towards the midfield, but is it therefore then worth keeping him? Because I don't think he averages what you thought he was going to average for the rest of the season, which was probably, what, 95 to 105? Yeah, people get so, kind of a little bit, um, I guess, biased towards that first quarter. Oh, he's on 60 at quarter time. And, you know, I mean, you don't want to lose that kind of potential. But the real issue is, is that, again, so Suns this week, he's going to miss out on Fremantle, which will be at Optus. So I know it's a shorter trip from Adelaide, but still going to Fremantle. Um, then it's actually not exactly the easiest run in the world either. You've got Frio, Giants, Dees, Geelong, Collingwood, Richmond. Yeah. Um, that's a very tough run. And I know he came out saying, oh, like we need to win every game and I really want to come back for the boys. But at the same time, that's a really tough and vigorous run where um, when you look at the opposite though, and this is someone who kind of comes into the, into the same consideration, even though I hate him, or well, I don't hate him, I love him, but he's just so frustrating to own. Heaney, right? Now, oh, cheaper, don't talk you can, about Heaney. No, no, no. Heaney, you can actually make a price point now. And this is the issue, right? So it's in oh. St. Kilda. St. Kilda, Essendon, the Dogs, Fremantle. Then they've got Adelaide, Giants, North. In that, That's in the Supercoach final series. So, like, Collingwood and Saints again to finish. Uh, Supercoach, Love Child. He's definitely someone I could see banging back that average again uh, in the back half of the year. And the issue I have, Chris, is that I would like to go Darcy, but then with the money that I did have in the bank, I can't manage to go and get Bonds and Pelly this week. Yeah, which which is, you know, you just need that extra boost, buddy. Yeah, I do. The, <laughs> the boost that we're telling everyone, I'm like, oh, use the boost now in round 14 or whatever it was. I'm like, you don't need a boost after the buy. Next minute. Same bang, reason bang, I shouldn't bang. have traded Pre- Parish. Don't trade a premium. Don't right. trade a premium with a one-week injury when I already had cover. I already had cover and I was trying to move into the top 100. Ah, you're good, um, you're good. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, and, uh, like, like what you were saying, you know, obviously tough run, um, et cetera, which doesn't, which doesn't help. Um, but to, to and more to the point, when he got this injury last year, he was on over a hundred at half time. So yes, he did the same thing. Like this is literally carbon copy, same injury, same like he was on that trajectory. He was going to be a hundred at half time, and then bang, he's gone. So he's what did he score in the first quarter? Fifty one or fifty something well, I like that? I think it was like, like sixty. I think he was even higher than fifty. Anyway, uh, yeah. absolutely killing it. Yeah. So he's done. It's. Look, what we know about Bud is he can score. Ceiling, like, through the roof. He's just not there with consistency yet. And his body is not up to scratch. We've now had two... This is a third year, actually, of consistent injuries throughout his AFL career. <coughs> I think he... <coughs> excuse me. I think he, unfortunately, might just be one of those guys that never gets out of first gear into the midfield because his body's not up to it. And I'm very cautious now, looking cautiously looking at next year, going even though he's probably now going to get forward status next year, is he really worth like having next year at the same price tag? Can you justify paying 450K for a Butters next year, knowing that for the past two years he's done the same thing to owners? So, yeah. yeah it's, it's frustrating. It is so, frustrating. Yeah, for all those reasons, in my opinion, he's the one to go. Um, he's also right now at a pretty decent price. I think he only dropped like 10K from his price drop um, with a high now, now high break even. So you, you know, best to get rid of him now and not risk that, that price drop. <coughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty strong on, I'm pretty uh, strong on trading him. Yeah, no, so I, I do agree. Unless somehow you can, if you've got plenty of trades, you could almost sort of work out a way to keep him and then get in a Taranto or a Heaney as a, a loophole player, as a luxury um, not that that would ever happen to someone like me that burns my trades at the moment. But the other issue is I do also want to touch on, Chris, is that Max Gorn's in that same situation because some people were looking at possibly holding him to get some more news. Now with English gone as well, I think it's it's definitely a big situation where they're going to have to trade um, Gorn, the ones that didn't sort of trade him last week. I think they're going to probably now be forced to trade him because otherwise you've got no Max Gorn and no English, so no cover. Um, unless, of course, you're playing for leagues, so that is definitely a big issue. That's pretty much that's the big dilemma, man. That's that's now there's no right way to play this. Some people will get Jackson and get absolutely K'd on the D, maybe for a month, maybe for the whole year. I can see the appeal. I am tempted. I'm not going to lie. I have looked at Jackson two different ways in which I can get him. 
Um, and then still have Proust, <laughs> still have English and all butters. So, you know, it's it's tough this time of year. It depends how many trades you have. Hey, Chris, like it really does. Yeah, and that is also a consideration. <clears throat> oh, I, was, I was looking into, say, uh, and um, uh, Marrera's Magic, uh, the infamous – uh, fantasy player that won fantasy in back-to-back years and then ranked, I think, 20-something in the third year. Um, comes over to Supercoach and uh, he's now ranked 24th. Insane that he's able to do that. Um, Running out of trades over here. Yeah, he's only got three trades left and he's got also he, and he has to make a trade this week. So I think he's also going to Bont, which means that he has to use two trades. So it means that he's on one trade for the rest of the season. So... That trades do factor into it at this point of the season. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, but again, you got um, if you if you're ranked high, you just have to kind of risk it and hope that you have luck with injury. Uh, you know, that's the only thing you can do because otherwise, people will be like, "Oh, I got to hold my five trades." Next minute, it's round twenty, and you haven't had any injuries for five weeks. You know, it's um, yeah, um, that's, the, that's the risk reward bundle. I think most people are in the similar boat to us. They've either got say you know, five, six, seven trades. You know, they're wondering. Yeah, they, they they've probably got one or two of those players. Do they make the trade? Do they not? Um, I think in in those sort of situations, five, six, seven, you probably can. Uh, how many rounds do we have? What round is it now? It's round fifteen. Nine to go. Nine, nine to go. go. Uh, so that means what? Four trades for nine games remaining, which is just over one trade per two Every weeks. Two weeks. Um, now, what that doesn't allow you the luxury of doing is being able to generate cash in bank for an, uh, an upgrade if that was to happen. So when an injury occurs, you want to hope that you've got enough to get a decent option at that price. Um, yep. So, yeah. I mean, th- the good news is, again, most people, most players, I mean, they've got a lot of the top six options, you know. So when one of those goes down, they're already cashed up. The midfielders that we've got this year, you know, I've got eight. I think the the midfielders that I've got are basically the top eight scoring mids, so they're all over six hundred k. So, you know, you're going to get something decent in return if one of those goes down. It's when one of your speculatives goes down. So for me, it's like when a Luke Ryan goes down, I'm screwed because I got no cash to upgrade him. He's not worth anything. So what do you do? Now, what's worse than all of that is making a problem from a problem. Uh, I think JB from the Doctor Supercoach podcast is really big on this. Is that with your trades this week, don't compound that by adding another problem to your side. So that's why I said about you know, bringing in Darcy Cameron, bringing in Luke Jackson, you're creating another problem that you're going to have to solve later with an unknown amount of trades and an unknown element. Just You're just moving that problem from now to the future. I just don't see that as a solution. That's To me, that's a waste of trades. It doesn't solve anything for, for your team. It just compounds the problem for later. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah, same as the whole the the proof scenario. It's like okay, well, you're spending three hundred eighty thousand dollars on Jackson, which means well, you know, that's money you could be using on somebody else and for that trade. So you might as well just upgrade, upgrade the upgrade Proust if you have him, or get rid of Gorn for a Darcy or someone like that. Is probably the best option this week, especially um, if there's a clear and obvious upgrade target. If there's a Bont or a Wits or. Um, a big mid that you missed or whatever it may be. Like there's this clear and obvious angle that you can take maybe to solve a negative pod. Like for my example, like Wits is a really good in for me because uh, like it, he's actually owned by 43% of the competition right now, which is insane. Like I thought it was way lower than that. Um, and I would say that from that 43%, a large amount of say the top five and 10K are probably even higher percentage than that. I would probably assume... 65, 70% of those in the 510K would have someone like a Wits. So me getting him is more of a negative pod um, to cancel that out so that at least I'm on a level playing field. Um, Someone like Bont, on the other hand, is only in 18%. Now that will go up this week because I know that a lot of people are trading in Bont, but he's still not going to be nearly as high owned as a Wits. So I'm better off playing the Wits role and bring that in to stop that from hurting me rather than bring in Bont. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Am I just making shit up as we go? No, 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 that makes sense. Um, and the funny part is, right, this this it, this week is so up in the air and people are kind of lis- listening to us, right? And they're kind of like, oh, Ben and Chris have usually got some great advice, which we do, right? But at the same time, we're throwing out all the different possibilities, all the different things to consider 
because it is very much team dependent at this point in time. And we might have actually asked or made you know maybe made you think about you have more questions now than answers, and that's okay too because you know what that's what we can do. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes when you have those discussions, right, it's healthy to talk amongst your friends and happy to and healthy to talk about all the different scenarios because you might go, oh, actually, that is an option that I didn't think about or, oh, crap, I didn't really consider the fact that, you know, that might just actually create an issue down the line. Um, and if you do have some team-specific questions, you can actually write into Jock's mailbag uh, hey. because Benny's going to be on there tomorrow night because, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. So they went for the yeah the backup plan I guess. Um, no, nah, um, I am I've got a, a prior commitment that um, that I've got to go to with uh, yeah with yeah, um, hit up my friends. partner's son. So yeah, all good. Anyway, and uh, if I can help you, it's almost like Chris. I've already gone. I was the premium rock, and then you were the English that was going to fill in for the week, and then you got injured. Um, <laughs> it's, so you, you know go. what it, no it's more like when you try and make a really good play and you bring in Proust and then he gets injured a quarter time oh, on 15 <laughs> oh, oh. you know the worst part I was actually sitting there intrigued in what you you were going to say <laughs> and then I kind of cottoned on to the insult that was coming oh yes Wait, I think there is more regret in me bringing in Proust for a week than there is getting rid of Josh Kelly for the, all of last year <laughs> no like, regrets Ah, oh, GWS players. What do we say about them, mate? I swear to God. They've turned a corner. Um, but you know what? Um, that's actually a good point that you bring up, and we should probably move into this because um, Taranto is someone that is uh, hot on the topic. Um, and I really want to see how they're going to get this back because I think he does come back this week. He played in the VFL last week and got 32 touches. He's probably coming straight back into the, v- the uh, AFL. But where does his role see? And Taranto is a midfielder. And what we've seen with McVeigh so far is that he sees a player and goes, "No, you're this. This is we're going to play you in your best position." Now, unfortunately, Taranto is a midfielder, which means that someone's going to suffer. And I really hope that's not Canelio, but um, or Tom Green, who I also really want to see in that midfield, um, or Josh Kelly. But something's got to give, and I think that there will be some sort of shift. Uh, whether that means less CBAs or, <coughs> or spread out across the team. <coughs> but yeah, you can't play, can't play Taranto in the forward line for you know, the entire game. So no, it, could, it could be Green might play a little bit more forward uh, and sort of help each other chop out or Cornelio as well. Probably they might even split yeah. kind of like the dogs do. Um, <laughs> it is definitely a, a pretty big consideration. Chris, you're, you're right there, mate. You're dying. Yeah, I'm just dying over here. Jesus. Oh, that's all right. Um, ties in with... For me, Taranto and Heaney are probably similar price points. And I keep bringing them up because based on price point, Heaney's really good. 450000 for a guy averaging 102. Now, I know he's not great and hasn't set the world's light, but again, they do have a favorable back end to the year uh, for those few games for Supercoach. Now, here's the issue that I'm having, right? Now, some of you might be in a situation like I am where you want Bontempelli. These other situations you have, you know, I mean, is it worth trying to – you know, like a Heaney or a Taranto, right? What's how much? How much more do you think Bond's averaging than them for the whole year, Chris? For the rest of the year, nine uh, rounds, at least fifteen points per game. Yeah, so you're looking at uh, what's that? One hundred and forty-five points. You're saying more, yes. um, which makes it a big deal then, because you if you have a rookie as cover, even if it's uh, what Clark from Richmond, you're saying you're better off yep. just taking that smaller score because you know Bontempelli will score you more than that player this week uh, for the rest of the year. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's that's pretty much the situation I'm in because I'm sort of I was tossing up between like, well, I could go butters down and avoid playing your know, Hobbs plus Clark for a week. Right. Here's the other but thing that, that it's a, big a lot of people haven't mentioned yet is that Bruce is due to be back soon. Um, so I might actually have a look at yes. um, when he's back. Now, when he's back, that could Bonte dramatically Pelly. shift Bont's role. Now, what we don't know is is he playing full because that's where they need him to play. Or is he playing forward because he can only play there because of his shoulder? Now, that's a question that we're not really going to find out. However, I think once Bruce comes back, he really should, by all means, be playing more midfield time. So I'm looking at that and going, I want probably a weak sample. But he might be one that he goes 140 the week that that, um, and plays more midfield the week that Bruce comes in, and he's a must-have. 
Well, Bruce can come back in this week, mate, because I Bruce, I think, kicked about three or four goals, didn't he, last week? Yeah, so, well, this is, and this is what I'm saying, is if, if Bond comes out and plays more midfield, gets CBAs, you know, it, and that bump happens like that, and we'll see it in the stats, right, and he goes 140, he could average 130 on the way home for the rest of the season. And instead of, say, going, you know, 110 to 95, that's 45 points per game on those other guys. You, you're going to have to do something to get Bont for the rest of the year. So I low owned and, compared, yeah, and he's low owned. So, so I am keeping an eye on that. It's a shame that we don't get a weak sample to say, yep, I definitely need Bond. But right now, Bond's at the edge of, do I really need him, or can I yeah. get away with X? You know, hundred and I mean? hundred and ten break even. Even if he goes well, he'll probably still be under six hundred thousand. So there's definitely oh, yeah. some room to move. Um, and that's definitely a consideration. And that's where it is for me. It's pretty much. You know, I've got cover there in the forward line. So anyone that has Hobbs, you're laughing. Uh, Clark or a few of these others. Chris, I think you've got Rioli hoping that he uh, gets a, a name in the f- best 22 this week. Yeah. And again, everyone's a lot of people in the same situation because uh, the top sort of 5,000, I think a lot of people have two or three of these players. So I've got Rioli. So, I've got Cooper Hamilton as well. So those guys are my F7 and F8. And unfortunately, I don't think the Cooper's playing. Even though it's playing, again, Cooper's playing very well in the reserves. He might get a call up at some stage, um, especially with Ryan Angwin um, going down. So he went down last week. There's now the, a space. So Cooper might actually get named this week, which would be amazing. Um, but then we've got uh, Rioli. He played fantastic in, in his limited time as the sub. Does that mean that he still plays the sub because he played it so well? Or does that mean that he now earned a spot back in the 22? It, it could be a thing. Um, so for me, I've got a one of those guys has to play or I've got to bring in a rookie that is playing. Um, in the forward line to be able to cover one of these guys. So that's going to be interesting uh, for for my team. And I think a lot of people are out there looking at the same thing, but there are opp- opportunities for these guys to play. So we're, we're going to not know until Thursday night and we just got to wait is what it yep. is. Yeah, I think Swizz will probably be doing his usual Thursday night. You are not doing the dirty mo <laughs> tweaker. Mate, I actually had it on just on the super coach averages and stats, and then I flick back to the Zencaster and I see you see your mug again. My God. You know what? Bailey Smith, eat your heart out. Um, that's all I can I'm, say. I'm going to grow a mullet as well and just let it all oh, hang out. Oh, <laughs> mate. Anyway, you, oh, anyway, we're not going to go there. I'm trying to think of Eric Banner. You kind of look like Eric Banner, but in like fat pizza or something. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, anyway, um, I don't know what else you want to talk about, mate, because I'm still hung up on all the issues that are going on here. Uh, um, Hollands could be getting a gig for Gold Coast at, at some point. I think he's still knocking around 23 or so touches. Dean for Collingwood is a $102,000 defender. If you do need to free up cash, I think he, Chris, looks like he is available. So yeah, a, no, so they've said that he's playing VFL this week. And um, okay. so my issue is basically they're playing um, Nathan Murphy as a KPD slash peel off defender. Um, and he's done amazing at it. Now he's only 190 centimeters. So he's a very short person defender and uh, Charlie Dean's 195. So he's a true like you know, key tall intercepting defender. So against the go- against the teams that have the really two, like the two really big forwards, we're going to struggle because obviously we've got Darcy Moore, but there's no one else that's, that's height. Um, even someone like a Jeremy height, Jeremy Howe's only 191, but he's got a big leaps and he's got a big frame. So we don't have the two big tools to defend against two big tools. Matchup dependency, Charlie Dean is going to be required. However, Nathan Murphy's playing so well that I don't think that they want to drop him. I thought personally when um, a few weeks back before Nathan Murphy started playing that as soon as Charlie Dean was available, he was straight best 22. But now after seeing him play, I've conceded that his spot's basically reliant on Murphy's form um, and the matchups. So I think he will play. I just don't know when that will be. So might be one you want to bring on at D8 if you've already got cover at D7. But I wouldn't bring him in right now if you don't have a, a, a playing rookie on the bench. Speaking of rookies on the bench, Luke Cleary. Now, I remember he played and he played pretty well for a couple of games. <coughs> and then Jurey Ju- 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 came back into the fold mm-hmm. and kicked him out. Now, Jurey's obviously done a pretty significant injury, I believe, to his knee. So for me, I think Cleary could be one that comes straight back in and slots in because he was impressive in those two games, averaging 68. So I think there yeah. is definitely some scope there for some extra coverage. Um, if you had him there just burning, I think he – or in my opinion, I'm like, well, who are, who are they going to get back in? Now, well, JJ did ones, come back in. 
No, the um, other one's um, Hayden we- Crozier as well, who's still playing in the VFL. Um, so, yes, they could definitely bring in Crozier um, to cover that role because obviously that was his previous role. Um, but they're, for whatever reason, fa- they are favouring Cleary because even when Cro- Crozier was available, they weren't bringing him back in. So I'm not sure you know, what that is about, but there's definitely an opportunity there. Having said that, it's not the safest job role. So again, I wouldn't be bringing him in as someone that's going to play the rest of the year and be your designated D7. But if you need a D8 this week for whatever reason and his name, then the, you know whatever the, he'll play and, and make a bit of cash because I think he's on the bubble, right? Yeah, he's on the bubble. Yep. So I guess wait for teams to be announced. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was named. Um, outside of that, just pretty much just try and what fake it till you make it. At this point, oh, I did not want to watch football on Sunday, mate. After the the Saturday fiasco, I was just like, you know what. And then the news on Monday with English, I was just like, I I give up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not often that happens, mate. You know what I mean? It's not it's, often that it's, happens it's where like, it hurt. It's like he's a 10, but he gets 15 and gets suspended in the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, it deflates well. everything out. And you're like, you know what? I quite like watching Gold Coast. I'm like, I don't feel like watching football today. I was just so livid. And it's one of those things you, you normally you move on pretty quick. You're like, oh, ha, ha. Like last year, I brought in Neil. He got injured. I moved him on. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. Like how crap's that? You know, bad luck. Whereas this year, I'm literally the last minute decision crying because my original trade plans. Now, this is you hearing a sob story about me. That's okay. Uh, my original trade plans was English, Bontempelli, and obviously going in uh, Himmelberg which was my original three, but then Himmelberg wasn't named in the back line. So I was like, oh, well, that's not the case. And lines up there before the bounce. So go figure. Fuck you, Swizz. Fair enough. Um, that's it. Well, that's my so story. So should we just jump into the VC and C, mate? Because um, yes, this big talking points. Honestly, like, who do you go? Um, now Jack Steele might be back this week. So there's another one, lads. That if you if you're needing a, a swing over to um, to someone from a midfield spot, you don't have that final mid upgrade yet, or you you. I know a lot of people were running butters at say M eight. Um, you might be able to just go butters to steal. You know, that's a nice little trade there. Um, I wouldn't mind that. Anyway, uh, we'll see how we go. Um, what are you thinking at the moment for your VC and C, mate? Um, well, logic says Melbourne and Brisbane, right, that Clayton Oliver or Lockie Neal is going to go big. Now, I'm not quite sure which way, to be honest. Now, Max Gorn out is probably a little bit of a factor because we know, I think, previous years and previous stats have said that, you know, Max Gorn hits the out a really high favorable advantage to Oliver. So that might be a little bit of an issue. Um, I'm not too sure. I think even in the grand final when Jackson was sort of doing the tap out, I think maybe Petraka actually benefited a little bit more um, from maybe him tapping it to the outside or I'm not quite sure what I'm talking about right now. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, I think the Ds will put a little bit of attention into Neil, not like a tagging role, but I'm not quite sure which way it's going to go. I, realistically, well, they, they, I think they, they, they could run harms on Neil. And oh, yeah. I think that there's a definite chance that they do if he starts getting off the chain and damaging them. And I think what happens is they run the first quarter, Neil gets 12 touches and they go, all right, harms go. <laughs> well, honestly, that's what I think happens. Um, and it seems to be what's happening a lot with Lockie Neil. And I'm, I'm, I start getting pissed off when you get the VC on him because he looks like he's having an absolute blinder and then they lock him down and he doesn't, he's not able to um, to produce that 140 plus that, that we know that he's got in him because he's gone... 60 points in Q in quarter one. Um, I don't like the, the, that, that, the fixture this week uh, for VCC. I just, there's nothing that appeals to me. Oh, you're uh, wrong. There's something that appeals to me. Uh, now, now I, outside of, so, so Clayton Oliver and Neil, I couldn't really decide between the two, right? Now, I'm actually, so I think if, if Mills can go 200 against the Hawks, then I think McRae is probably a really good VC that's option. That's the VC. That's the VC I'm going to be going. He, I'm going he to be probably he VC. might bang out a 130 and you just take it, and I'm okay with that. Now, as far as a captaincy option, I can't see Laird getting anything less than a 120 against North Melbourne for those that own Laird. Yeah, uh, I just think I think that's a, a sure deal. He racks up a lot of the pill. Um, they should win the game, which means that there's probably quite a bit of you know a bit of the pie there for him. Um, I think McRae into Laird is probably the most logical situation. If you don't have Laird, then realistically I'm thinking you probably 
Like I'm not keen to go like Mills. I wouldn't really have as a C because of his high fluctuations. Same as Tuke Miller, high ceiling but high fluctuations. So you kind of pass on those. I think you're probably then better off actually having a look and going um, probably you know like a Clary into a McRae or a Neil into McRae, and you'll be pretty safe with that because I know McRae's had a few sort of poor scores, but I think against the Hawks, I think he should at least you know bang out at least a hundred. But I'm expecting about a one thirty or more, hopefully. I'll throw out two others for you that I'm very keen on. And the first one's not going to impact a lot of people because he's not highly owned. But um, I think Sean Darcy this week, if Tabin is named, will be rucking against Sam De Koning and he is going to monster him. Um, so there's that. But also Wits is basically rucking against Finlayson. That is going to be the whitewash of all whitewashes. So he should go 130 with ease. And as a backup captain option, Jared Witts this week, I don't think you can go much better, honestly. Um, so those, yes, I reckon those are all serviceable. But Laird, you're right with Laird. I think Laird's 40 touches, right? Yes. So, but the problem was last week he had, what, 37 touches and he just sneezed past 100. So I think he got 117 or something. It'll do. Um, the other issue with Witts, remember Hawks had no ruck and he only got a 119, but that was, I guess, at T.O., so I guess a little bit of oh, consideration there. Only 119 for your captain after your VC fouls is not too bad, bud. I know, but after a 68, there'll be a lot of nervous folks, Chris. After a 68, when people had him as captain last week, there'll be a few people butthurt. I do think he bounces back. What did Who did Port play last week? I know, they, they won, though, didn't they? I know They did, did Port, win. Who did they play? Let's have, I'm just going to have a look win. at their scores last week. Uh, uh, so round 14, uh, it was Sydney. Oh, Laddams. So and, what did Laddams yeah. go? Uh, he got suspended. <laughs> uh, Lanham's got like a 59. 49. He did horrible. Yeah, 49. Okay, so, I mean, yep. you know, that's not, that doesn't bode well. <laughs> no. Did, who else? Who backup rucked? Uh, Reed went 107 with nine hitouts. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, uh, look, there's a there's a potential there for, for a big ruck to score quite well. So Is, um, is yeah. Hickey back? Is Hickey back for Sydney this week? Uh, uh, he could be, but I'm not sure. I don't know the uh, update on Hickey at this uh, stage. Sydney, Sydney's in troubles. Um, the other small shake would obviously be um, Parrish, if you still have him as a VC. Uh, I don't mind him against West Coast as well. If he's fit and firing, he could be absolutely big uh, for those that still own him because I do not. Is there, There's a double header on Friday night this week. There is. But, look, I'll applaud them one thing, all right? Double header, and they've, they've, they've given it a little bit of clean air, and basically half time is when uh, you've got to switch over from the Doggies game to the, to the Eagles game, if that's a thing. Why can't they just, like, they've given it an hour and 40 minutes. You only need, like, what, 50 minutes longer, and you'd be able to do it. Just make it a, nine, a 9.30 start, because it's only 7.30 in, in um, Adopter Stadium. Yep. Like what? That surely that's not hard to do. It's a Friday night. Like oh, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Anyway, plus um, plus I mean the other game you've got two big uh, two Melbourne teams, so you're gonna get the East Coast following watching that game anyway. It doesn't make sense. And and the other teams Essendon in, against the coast, and it's a game that you know not many people are gonna tune into anyway. So just oh yes, I don't know who fixtures these AFL games, but I think they need to talk to me. And I'll sort them out, all right? <laughs> does, that, does that wrap us up, mate? I think it's... Um... I think that does wrap us up. I think a lot of the um, other information will be in our team specific. So, Do you feel um, like I've influenced bring... you enough and been more persuasive enough to convince you to do the right thing or what? I think you have, Chris, actually. You know, surprisingly enough. Now, you and Swizz don't get enough credit because... Sometimes I look at doing stuff. Now, last week I actually had really good decisions in the English Bont and Himmelberg, which would have probably put me in the top 100, but I kind of fucked that up. And now you boys are talking logic and uh, helping me fix my team. So I really appreciate <laughs> your you're, insight. You're welcome. Everyone in the top 1,000 owes me a thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no, no, no. Damien, Damien Yeah, Gunn. exactly right. Um, that's it from us. Stay tuned for our – we'll do our team reveal – um, I don't know if it's worth doing mine now. <laughs> With these Thursday lockouts, it's I'm so upset. hard to get content out before like teams announce. So yeah, um, yeah, we'll Swizzle see how we probably, go. I don't know when Swizz will do his. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I want to try and do mine tomorrow, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, look, I might do mine now because I'm already in misery and I'm already had a couple. <laughs> already had a couple, so maybe I'll just get the tissues out and, um, and finish the, misery the job. Misery loves company, mate. That's for sure. Finish the job. Uh, anyway, that is us. Uh, thank you very much. Do like, subscribe. 
don't even know what the hell we spoke about today. Hopefully we have helped you in some capacity and go, <laughs> yes, I'll take that snippet of information and run with it. Let us know how bad you are screwed this week. That's probably makes me, make me feel better. Tell me how fucked you are. And um, that's it. More curse words from me today than any other week. And it's just deserved because this week is sucks. And uh, we'll leave you with that, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Boy.